Hello friends, today is our second lecture related to SS7 signaling and today we will start with the SS7 functional structure. So let's start. The SS7 functional structure is basically comprised of two parts, the message transfer part and the user part. The message transfer part basically has three sub parts which are called MTP1 MTP2 and MTP3. The MTP1 basically is responsible for signaling data link level. The MTP2 handles the signaling control and the MTP3 handles the signaling network function. While the user part uses the services of the MTP1, 2 and 3 to travel the messages through the signaling network. If we compare the OSI model with the SS7 model, then at layer 7, which is basically the application layer, the user parts that use the services of the MTP layers are INAP, CAP, MAP, BSSAP, ISAP, and TUP, which are basically telecommunication protocols which belong to the application layer and use the services of the underlying layers of the SS7 network. So let's have a look into the message transfer part in more detail. The message transfer part provides the functions that enable user parts as I have already mentioned that user part basically uses the services of the message transfer part. So Message transfer part provides the functions that enable user part significant information to be transferred to the required destination. In addition, functions are included in the MTP to overcome the network and system failures that would affect the transferring of the signaling information. Now we come to the user part. So what are the different user parts that we have seen already in the application layer. So the different application parts or the user parts includes the ISDN user part, the mobile application part, and the operation maintenance and administration part. Uh, we will be having a deep look into these application parts in the later lectures. So there are three kinds of signaling units. As we have seen, the message transfer part. So message transfer part basically carries three different kinds of signaling units. Those are called the message signaling units, link status signaling units and fill in signaling units. So let's see what are these signaling units. The message signaling unit is basically comprised of this structure while link status signaling unit comprises of this structure and the fill-in signaling unit comprises of this structure. Let's have a look into these. If we we'll have a look on the meanings of the different signaling unit fields which are common, then F basically stands for flag code, BSN stands for backward sequence number, BIB stands for backward indicator bit, FSN stands for forward sequence number, FIB stands for forward indicator bit and L stands for length indicator while the CK is the check code and this you can see over here the different common bits uh, which are present in all three different kinds of the message units. If we have a deeper look into the signaling units then the first, sign uh, the first major uh, Thing that we are going to see is the uh, status field that is carried in the link status signaling unit. If I refer to the LSSU then you can see that there is a part that is called the status field. So what does it mean? So status field basically carries, kind, uh, carries the information which indicates the status of the local terminal link. That is, it can be in the state of loss locating, it can be normal locating, emergency locating, 
service interruption or processor fault and link congestion etc so this kind of information is basically put into this part of the message and it is represented through this coding scheme uh, now we come to another signaling unit field uh, and which, which is called the signaling information octet and is carried in the message signaling unit if i go back to the message signaling unit architecture then there is a part which is called the signaling information octet so let's see what is this signaling information octet basically has two major fields two major parts which are called the subservice field and the service indicator the subservice field basically carries the network indicators like it can be international national or reserved <coughs> and for the service indicator part it can be uh, this this kind of different parameters it, it can carry like it can be signaling connection control part those who are familiar with the signaling will definitely be will be having an idea that how common is the SCCP part in the SS7 signaling overall so now I come to the signaling information field which is carried in the message signaling unit and if we go back to the MSU structure then you can see that this is the place of the SIF so let's see what is SIF so if I take the example of the MTP management message then the signaling information field carries the management message followed by the signaling link code the originating point code and the destination point code what is these terminologies that we have already learned in our earlier lesson in our earlier lecture so you may refer to that as well yeah, well if we take the example of the top message uh, top is basically belongs to the higher layer so when the higher layer uses the MTP layer then it carries the signaling message over here followed by the circuit identification code signal link selection mask OPC and DPC same goes with the ISAP message that is the ISTN user part message which carries the signaling message followed by the circuit identification code signaling link selection code OPC and DPC and in case of SCCP it's similar except kick is not pre present over there so now let's have a deeper look into the message transfer part <clears throat> the message transfer part as we have studied earlier basically comprises of three levels the MTP1 MTP2 and MTP3 so MTP3 basically is the signaling network function message part while the MTP2 uh, deals with the signaling functions and MTP1 is basically relates to the physical processing of the messages the user parts basically uh, interacts with the signal link message processing uh, so that their messages can travel over the signaling network so let's have a further deep look into the mtp1 mt1 mtp1 as i earlier said is basically the physical layer at the physical layer to transfer the ss7 it defines the physical electrical and functional features of the ss7 the physical layer can be either 64 kbps or 2 mbps in case of the tdm messages uh, if we talk about the mtp2 a link level then it deals with the signaling units delimiting locating error control initial locating error rate monitoring flow control and processor fault which are the basic functions of the mtp2 layer so uh, in case of uh, signaling unit delimiting the MTP2 basically uh, starts controls the starts and ends with the flag code usually the start flag code is the end of the previous signaling unit and there can be many flag codes between two signaling units so I think this information is sufficient for us to understand the uh, function of the delimiting for locating 
Here it does not mean actually the initial locating, but locating closely related with the delimiting on the signaling link. Once the flag code of the signaling unit is correctly identified, the signaling unit is located. In case of error control, the MTP2 basically performs the error detection and error correction both. So it can be the bit error rate or it can perform the basic error correction mode as well. So you can refer to the further details over here. Initial locating basically is a compulsory stages before operation of the link. The locating process in link recovery after initial start or when the fault occurs in the link uh, is being used uh, for the locating process. Uh, Here is the initial locating process in which uh, you can see the different stages that are being followed between the two different signaling points. Here SPA and SPB basically corresponds to the signaling point A and signaling point B which indicates two uh, peer entities, two peer nodes or two peer signaling points and you can see the different uh, stages that they are being uh, passed through. Uh, then MTP2 also performs the error rate monitoring in because in order to ensure the quality of service of the signal inning and the error degree that is tolerable, it should be monitored. Uh, flow control is another function of the MTP2. When the signal link is overloaded, the flow control program of level 2 should be started so that congestion uh, should not happen and the link will be recovered to normal state. Processor fault is another function of the MTP2 or you can say it's an indication the processor is regarded as faulty if normal operation of the link is disabled due to causes in levels higher than level 2. Uh, now I come to the MTP3 layer. So MTP3 layer as we earlier saw has basically two functions that is the message processing and the signaling network management. In case of message processing it can have the message identification, message distribution and message routing. While for signaling network management the signaling message can be reliably transferred in the signaling net network even if some points or transmission links are faulty in the signaling network. So uh, for message processing a functionality in the MTP3 layer as we uh, have seen that message identification, message routing and message distribution are the basic functions of the message processing part. While for the signaling network management uh, it performs the signaling service management, signaling link management and signaling route management. For signaling service management the MTP3 layer performs the functions of the change over, change back, uh, compulsory rerouting, control rerouting and the signaling point restarting as well uh, and management interruption or in case of service flow control as well. For signaling link management, it performs the functions of the basic signaling management procedure, automating allocating the signaling terminal uh, and automating allocating the signaling data link as well. For signaling route management, it performs the functions of the transfer uh, forbidden procedure, transfer allowed, transfer restricted, signaling route group and signaling route group congestion as well. Uh, like uh, we can have an example of uh, just to make this uh, more interactive and interesting for you that how a signal link test procedure happens. So in this case uh, I have taken the example of two SPs in which the SPA sends a signal link test message to SPB and while the SPB responds back with the signaling link test acknowledge message. So this way the two entities can test the uh, signal links between each other and can start the message exchange. Now to give you a flavor of the uh, different uh, protocols, uh, we will be having a brief look of the telephony user part. 
basically telephony user part is one of the level four user parts in number seven signaling mode also the fourth functional level recommendation put forward at the earlier stage so in this case uh, as i already mentioned that this is the structure of the message signaling unit in which the signaling information field carries the uh, associated information and what different messages are carried in it include the initial address message uh, initial uh, <coughs> subsequent address message subsequent address message with one address address complete signal and other messages that you can see over here uh, this is the basic call connection signaling flow between two signaling points in which the IM message is being sent from SPA to B which is replied by address complete message from the other entity then the answer message that is followed by the conversation and then the clear functions and the release uh, call is being released subsequently. So in this lecture uh, and overall uh, our two uh, videos, we have learned the concept of uh, signaling system, their generation development, and overall the number seven signaling system along with the details of the MTB function. In our later lectures, we will be having a detailed look into the ISTM user part, the SCCP part, and other mo uh, like mobile application part, INAP, uh, that will give you a very very deep look into the number seven segment so thank you very much uh, please subscribe to our channel and stay tuned